good one. So as I talked to you before, the spectroscopy is the powerful tool for the structural determination of uh, the organic unknown organic compounds. And in that case, uh, in most of the cases, you are given molecular formula of the compound and the spectral data and uh, you are asked to uh, solve the problem. These kind of problems are bit easier in the sense that uh, you can draw the n number of isomeric structures and that isomeric structure one of the structure will fit with the spectral data given to you. Now just you think that you are given a molecule which is a molecular formula is not known and you just go and record IR spectra, proton NMR 13 C and mass spectrum of that compound. And once you have all these spectrums together, each kind of spectra as I mentioned earlier gives you specific kind of information. From these different spectra, you collect the information and try to get the molecular formula first followed by the structure solution. So, with this as I said you will be given only IR, NMR and mass spectral data with no molecular formula. So, how to solve these problems I am going to talk today about it. So, if you look at this problem in this case you are given three spectrum one top one is the 13 CNMR spectrum, the left hand side bottom left hand side is the mass spectrum and the bottom right is the IR spectrum of the compound. So, if you look at the 13 CNMR spectrum, if you count these peaks, so there are 8 carbon signals. So, it means this molecule contains at least 8 carbon, it can be more than that also because if you remember what I said if you have symmetry in your molecule the number of carbon what you get will be just half. The bottom spectrum the left side the mass spectrum and you can see a clear cut peak at uh, 174 and if you look at the uh, left hand side corner what is written there that is E i it means the mass spectrum is recorded in electron ionization mode. But in the circle the m plus is denoted as 175 which is not clearly visible in the spectrum. So, what does it mean? It means the molecule has molecular weight of 175. So, it is a odd molecular weight. So, it means this compound contains odd number of nitrogen number 1. Number 2 you do not see any m plus 2 peak there meaning there is no peak at 177. So, it means you do not have sulfur, chlorine or bromine in this molecule. So, this is the information what you got from your mass spectrum. Now, if you look at your IR spectra, it says the stretching frequency at 1680 centimeter inverse. What is that? It means you have a carbonyl group which is in conjugation with something. So, that we will come sometime later. Now, this is the NMR spectrum of uh, the compound, the bottom spectrum which is starts from 0 ppm to maybe 10 or 11 ppm that is the whole spectrum and then you just see the uh, um, kind of egg kind of shape what I have drawn here. So, that is the expanded region of that particular region. So, that is about uh, 6 ppm to 7.4 ppm or so if you expand this region this is how you see the spectrum. In that case at 7.24 ppm you have CdCl3 and then you have two doublets over there and there are other peaks also I will come to that bit later. And there is another peak at uh, 9.6 ppm and that is a doublet clear cut doublet. So, if you remember what I said any peak that is in between uh, 9 to 10 ppm that is the aldehydic peak. So, we just right now we talk that we had a carbonyl group which is in conjugation 
by IR. So, it means the carbonyl group is nothing but a aldehyde group and that aldehyde is attached with a CH because only then you will get a doublet of CHO. And if you look at the bottom square bracket, that square if you add up all these values, these are the integration values. So, that comes around 15 or 14 or 15. So, it means this compound can have about 14 or 15 hydrogens. Remember what I said to you when I was talking about the integration and number of protons. I clearly mentioned that the uh, number the integration value may or may not be directly proportional to number of proton. This is one such example we will come bit later on this. So, it means based on these information what we summarize now what we said till now the mass spectrum it says your molecular ion peak is 175 it means this molecule must have odd number of nitrogen. I will add further no sulfur, no Cl, no Br because there is no m plus 2 peak. IR 1680 centimeter inverse it means you have a carbonyl group that as I said before the carbonyl is in the form of aldehyde and that is to attest with a CH. Number of protons 14 to 15 maybe, number of carbons at least 8 and we have a CHO group. So, based on that what we come to conclude now that the compound contained at least one nitrogen and one oxygen apart from carbon and hydrogen. So, once you have this kind of information with you what you do now just divide your molecular uh, ion peak that is the molecular weight of the compound by number 13 and whatever the value comes that is the integer value that will be the number of carbon and number of hydrogen will be number of carbon plus reminder if any. So, it means if you divide 175 by 13, so you get 30 and reminder 6. So, it means the molecular formula of this compound would be C 13 H 19. So, this is the molecular formula if you add it up it will come 175. This is the molecular formula when you have only carbon and hydrogen in your compound, but Uh, so, uh, we already said that we had uh, oxygen and uh, nitrogen. So, what you need to do now with this uh, formula which we already calculated is C 13 H 19, you add nitrogen to it and remove nitrogen equivalent C H. It means what? Nitrogen molecular weight is 40, so C H 2 is 40. So, add nitrogen, remove C H 2, then add oxygen that is 16 molecular weight remove CH4 that also becomes 16. So, the molecular formula of this compound comes to be C 11 S 13 NO and if you add the molecular weight of this compound it will come around 175 it will come it will be 175. So, it means this molecule has a molecular formula C 11 S 13 NO. Now, what you need to do you just calculate the dV as we talked about. So, you have 6 dV, it means this compound contains 6 degree unsaturation. So, what we have talked or what we have seen before, if you look at your NMR spectrum again, this one. So, you have a peak in between 6 to 7.4 ppm, that is a typical range for aromatic system. And if you look at this spectrum again, there are two peaks which are very identical that is doublet. Can you recognize those peaks? One is at 6.7 ppm, another is at 7 point roughly at 7.5 ppm. The shape of these two peaks is same. Okay? And then you see one four line pattern at around 6.5 ppm and then you see a doublet at 7.4 ppm. Okay. So, it means what it looks that this is the aromatic system as I said and you have two additional peaks there and that is for vinylic protons. 
why we say the vinylic protons if you remember what i said that your cho is attached with ch right and 4 db is gone for your uh, aromatic ring one for carbonyl one for vinyl so if you look at it again so it means this is what i said the presence of double doublet at 6.5 ppm and doublet at 7.35 ppm confirms the presence of vinyl group it means this compound is like this you have an aromatic system you have a vinylic system you have a cho and you have a nitrogen so the aromatic system can be of number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 means mono substrate if it is disulfide ortho disulfide metal disulfide or para disulfide but if you look at your nmr spectrum which i just discussed you have a two doublets of equal intensity in the aromatic region it means your compound is para disulfide that is 4 so this is what it is so it means what we have accounted till now we have accounted from this molecular formula c 9h7no and this are the molecular formula and what is left behind now c2 h6 it means ch3 twice and you have a singlet of six protons and a peak in the 13th year 40 ppm that indicates nitrogen is attached with two methyl groups now the molecular formula of uh, structure of tentative structure of this compound would be the para disulfide benzene plus vinylic system attached with in conjugation with aldehyde and n dimethyl group so if you hook up all these together this is what the structure comes to be now even you can uh, know by drawing the resonating structure you can find out which is the most deshielded proton in the aromatic system and where is your proton A. So, this is the structure of your compound based on the spectrum given to you. Uh, next problem I will talk now is a little bit complicated than previous one. In this case, the top spectra is the mass spectrum, then you have a IR spectrum, then you have a proton NMR and then you have a carbon everything is given in one slide now and uh, I have made a you know the main peaks are in inside the uh, bracket the square uh, and if you look at it at 126 and you are given one uh, peaks at 126 127 128 this is m plus m plus 1 m plus 2 peaks and the intensity of each of the peak is given over here so you have m plus 2 peak intensity 4.9 percent if you remember in last some of the problems i said by mass spectrum is the intensity of m plus peak is 33 percent or it is 1 is to 1 or it's a 4.67 percent that indicates the presence of chlorine bromine or sulfur so it means this compounds contains sulfur it does not have odd number of nitrogen because the molecular weight is even though it can have even number of nitrogen that we will talk a bit later if you look at the ir again the ir peak is around 16 80 centimeter inverse co is in conjugation now if you look at nmr spectrum you have a singlet at 2.5 ppm then you have peak around 7 to 7.5 ppm which on expansion looks like this what I have shown here and then if you look at the 13 C that is the depth experiment you have 1 CS3, 3 CH and 2 quaternary carbon. So, this much of this much of information you get from each kind of these spectrum given to you over here. Now, uh, do again the same thing so you have a sulfur there and you have a carbonyl group which is in conjugation there is no cl no br and no odd number of nitrogen that is as per mass spectrum and 13c you have 1 ch3 3 ch 
and two quaternary carbons. And again use the same uh, rule that is rule 13 and when you uh, do this uh, what happens uh, you have C9 and H18. So, if this compound contains only carbon and hydrogen the molecular formula of this compound is C9 H18 and that will make the molecular weight 126, but you already have confirmed the presence of oxygen and sulfur. So, what you need to do now you add sulfur that is 32 remove C 2 H A that becomes 32 add oxygen remove C H 4 that is 16. So, the molecular formula of this compound is C 6 H 6 S O. Now, calculate the d v and d v comes out to be 4. It means this compound contains 4 degree of unsaturation. Now, if you look at the NMR spectrum you have uh, peak in between 7 to 7.8 ppm in proton NMR and 125, 135 centimeter inverse 3 CH and presence of COCS3 group is there, but you have only 6 carbons and you have COCS3 group also. You have a CS3 then you have a CO from IR or the IR also and 13 C. So, the tentatively the compound is you have 4 carbon plus COCS3 plus 3 hydrogen plus sulfur and aromatic. So, what you can think of this is 2 substituted thiophene and under the, using this kind of uh, technique you can solve any kind of problem you are given um, based on the uh, spectral information and you can look at uh, the Silverstein textbook and uh, there are many such problems over there and I will try to come up with these kind of problems time to time during this uh, hard time because it is locked down uh, due to corona scare and uh, enjoy reading if you have any question and query please contact me thank you. आपकी वीडियो आ गया